Hey ADF fans, welcome back. It's the end of 2019. It is in fact the final day of 2019. I've got one more video that I want to quick put out here uh, for you all because this has been a topic that we've been discussing online. Uh, some folks are kind of having some uh, troubles understanding how to uh, combine the ability in ADF to have a list of items from a pipeline and then to be able to transform data through data flows across a list of tables. One thing you have to keep in mind is that with data flows, there doesn't have to be a hardened defined schema. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to take a list of tables. Each table is going to have a different schema and I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to create another version of that table in the same database. And so it's a very simple uh, sort of a form of transformation, but you can add transformations in there as well through patterns. Now, some of the common different ways that I see folks creating lists or having lists of tables that need to be transformed or to work with is to have control tables or in this case what I'm going to do is something very simple I'm going to use a lookup within a pipeline that uses the uh, information schema from SQL Server so I'm going to say give me any table where the name uh, is like dim percent so in my database and my database is defined by the data set that I'm using. The data set I'm using here is Azure SQL Table 1 and uh, I'm going to bring back the name of any table starting with DIM. The link service associated with this data set points to this database right over here. And you see I have one, two, three, four tables that start with DIM. So we'll be matching on four tables. So it's going to come back, this look is going to come back with those four tables in a JSON structure. So then what I do is a for each. In that for each, for the items, I just say give me the output value from that lookup. It's going to iterate <clears throat> over each one of those tables, each one of those four tables, and then inside the for each, I just have a data flow. The data flow is not going to use any sort of TTL or anything like that. I'm just going to use a uh, normal auto resolve Azure integration runtime. <clears throat> In the, I have these running in parallel. In the for each, you can set these to run sequentially, in which case the TTL will be helpful for you. But in this case, I'm just going to run them all in parallel, so I'm not going to have to worry about that. And besides, I'm only going to run this in debug for this demo anyway. So they'll all run uh, against a warm cluster. Okay, so each one of those activities is a um, data flow. And each time the data flow runs, it's going to pass in a new name of the table from that list that was found in the lookup. So that is at item dot table name. That is table name is the output from the information schema query. So let me go back to that query and I'll show you. The query is returning table under name. So that is my output. So I'm taking that in my for each, I'm passing that using that value of at item, which is the iterator from the for each. And I am saying give me the table name from each iteration. And then on the sync parameter, I am concatting that same table name with underscore new using at concat saying give me item dot table name table underscore name and then concat underscore new so all it's going to do is going to create a brand new table whatever schema comes in it's going to pass a schema out to the new table name so the reason this is working is because you see i have two different parameterized data sets in my data flow so now let's look at the data flow all it is is a source and a sync and it's using these parameterized data sets so all i parameterize in the data set is the table name in the connection that's it table name is the parameter name i used for this data set <clears throat> and then for the target i just use my table name you can call these whatever you like but you just need to pass it in from the iterator. You don't need a default value here. I'm just using this for another demo. But Back to the data flow. Now here within this, you, you don't even need to set anything else on here, but you could do more advanced types of transformations. You could do um, upserts, updates, deletes. You could add transformations between. Now if you're going to transform in between and you want this to be generic to be any sort of table with any kind of schema, just make sure that you're using patterns. Any string value. So I could say give me a column pattern, remove the direct column derived uh, expression. And I could see, say, that any type of column that is a string, I want to trim because I know everything that's coming in. When I do this, these tables are not clean enough, so I'm going to take any um, um, any column as a string, and I'm going to trim it. So we'll just do it like this. In fact, you know, I'll probably just leave that just right there. And on the sync, just make sure you have auto mapping on, and you're good to go. And that's it. Let's save this all. Go back to our pipeline and we can debug this.
So first thing it's going to do is going to run that information schema query. It's going to get those four tables. Let's start with dim. It's going to pass each one of those to an iterator into the for each. We're going to then take the table underscore name output from that query. We're going to pass that string name to the data flow. The data flow is going to take that table name. It's going to trim every string field, every bar char, whatever field in there. And it's going to create a brand new copy of that table with the trimmed columns in it. Uh, this is in progress, so you see each one of the data flows has been triggered, has been kicked off. They are running, they're executing. Now we can go back to our management studio. I can refresh these tables, the table list, and we'll see that there's dimemp emp and there's dimemp new. It's probably not fully created yet, so we can slip the top 1000 of the dimemp. Let's see if we have probably anything that we can actually see from the string being trimmed. And uh, let's give it a minute to complete. I think this will take a minute to complete. And it's already done, it's less than a minute, so now we can do the query, and there it is, and we can look at, let's look at products. Thanks, and have a great new year, I will talk to you all again in 2020.